with Cast News and Rock Star League Season 4. We are in the third place match. If you haven't seen the rest of the tournament, I suggest you go check it out. Of course, it's all here on Artosis Casts. Thank you so much for subscribing uh, and liking these videos. Now, this third place match, we have Yabsab here in the bottom right. Yabsab has had just a wonderful tournament, falling to Stork in six games in that top four. Now fighting for the third place prize. And his opponent, of course, Bishop. The only Terran that made it into the round of eight. Uh, he then subsequently made it into the round of four, where he ended up losing to Killer. But here he is to redeem himself, at least partially. Again, fighting for third place. Now, this is going to be a best of five. And, uh, yeah, the first map is Polypoid. So, I think a perfect map to start things off on. Uh, probably the best map in the pool right now. Just very standard stuff. We've seen some great uh, SK Terran plays out of Bishop throughout this tournament. He's shown a ton of his Terran vs. Zerg. Uh, but how much of that has Yabsab really studied for this match, I guess, is the question. Because Bishop has, for instance, on Polypoid, done a lot of... Uh, just straight up marine, medic, science vessel type of plays. But on other maps, he's been pretty aggressive, pretty cheesy. Uh, he's done a lot of two-port wraith. He's done uh, some various vulture plays. And yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what he'll end up bringing to the series. He seems pretty solid overall, though, in TVZ. So is Yabsab going to be able to deal with that and get that third place trophy? Of course, both these guys uh, still, I guess, technically amateurs, but... Yeah, at the very top of that heap, no doubt. All right, so Bishop sending out his SCV. No gas as of yet, so it definitely looks like it's going to be a barracks expansion, which most likely will be going into a standard marine medic play. Or Yabsab just getting his gas, getting his pool after that hatchery first. They're cross spawns, of course. And as Bishop sees this Overlord coming, he knows, of course, that Yabsab is bottom right. And Yabsab, likewise, knows that Bishop now is top left. So they're going to be able to scout each other down. Of course, Yabsab is just kind of checking to see uh, if this is any sort of factory play, right? Like, you need a sunken colony if your opponent goes quick factory, or a single vulture could literally end up killing you. Uh, now, the drone coming up, and he sees the SCV coming down. You can't really commit at this time with the drone, because you know a marine is popping out. So he'll just micro it a little bit. He wants to see if a command center goes down, because if the command center doesn't go down, then suddenly you know that it's going to be a factory. He sees it pop down. And now these guys both have full intel. He's going to see the layer start here at about 250. So that's a very, very quick layer. Uh, and Bishop's going to have to be prepared for that. He's going to have to make sure his turrets are up in time if it is Muta's, which it most likely will be. All right. And now that we kind of have that opener out of the way, they both have an equal amount of information. Everything looking very nice. Uh, a second barracks goes up. Already the third Marine starting here for Bishop. So it seems like he'll probably have a more marine-heavy opener and less of an academy rush. But we'll see about that. Third marine being made. Here comes a refinery. Oh, maybe it will still be an academy rush. Uh, the bishop just micro on the SCV. Of course, you want to keep this alive as long as possible to check just in case uh, whether or not it is a hydralisk den coming up. It's almost... It's Well, actually, I say it's almost uh, completely uncommon, but honestly, it's become more common lately, be probably because it's so uncommon uh, to do two hatchery lurker builds. So uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing that out of Yabsab. Bishop running the SCV away, and it looks like he has a second SCV coming out, which is pretty common. If your SCV starts to take a lot of damage, sometimes it's better just send out a second one and retreat with the first. Now, the Spire coming up. Looking over here, yeah, just pretty standard as far as the drone counts. Just a few Zerglings on the map. Looks like about six right now. Bishop with that uh, Academy finishing up. So, yeah, it did turn out to be an Academy rush, which means he should be able to pop out a Medic and a Fire Bat or two Medics up to him uh, and start to go across the map. And that is something that you try to do in this matchup to force your opponent to just make some sunken colonies. Uh, if you can get them to make some sunkens, then it kind of slows down the mutas. You know, it takes away from their drone, kind of makes them defend a little bit uh, and gives you that little tiny bit of an edge. Well, Stim on the way. Still waiting. Okay, a couple medics being made. Yeah, those are perfectly timed. So he could do a move out, but of course it's cross map, so it's harder to really force anything. And honestly, with how quick the layer was, it was about 10 seconds quick. It feels like 
Yabsab could actually skip completely making any sort of uh, sunken colony defense, especially considering we see here third hatchery in the main base. That third hatchery is going to allow Yabsab to stay extra safe. If you have a third base out on the map, you always have to worry about defending it. If some Marines sneak by or something like that. Uh, but yeah, he's he's going to be able to produce a lot of units and be quite safe this game. Bishop pushes out just slightly, but doesn't commit across the map. Did use that single scan so far. Another two medics coming out and two barracks being added on. Uh, the eBay just now finishing, and oh no, four lings actually run in, and this is going to give him a full scout. He sees that it's four barracks, so he knows it's going to be very marine-heavy play uh, coming out of Bishop. Of course, there's all sorts of ways you can try to play against that. You can try to go into quicker lurkers. Sometimes you'll just make some static D and really micro your mutas heavily. Uh, and sometimes you'll just kind of rush up to hive, knowing your opponent's science vessels will be a little bit later. Well, the mutas are coming across the map right now. He did get a couple of SCVs, and a lot of times the Ling run buys, what they actually end up doing is slowing down missile turrets. And you can see, he actually doesn't have any missile turrets ready if those Mutas had flown directly, and they might have gotten a little bit of damage. But it seems like he is just going to kind of wait for more outside the base. You know, flying in with the first four or five doesn't normally do very much. You really want to get six, seven, eight, you know, so on and so forth. So the barracks finishing up, an additional couple turrets being made. Plus one, of course, on the way. Looks like range already done this game. Another turret there at the natural. Notice Bishop. He's out front with this little marine group. He's just kind of microing against the mutas. This is the threat of a counterattack. So the mutas really want to dog this group and pick off as many of the marines as is possible. Of course, it, there's this is so micro-intensive on both sides. Let's see what they can get done. The mutas, yeah, just kind of going around. He's got 10 here, just one shy of a full group. Is he actually going to go in and try to take the take the swipe? It doesn't seem like it, right? Like, he's being pretty timid against such a small amount of Marines. Uh, in the meantime, sending a couple Hydras up to guard this base. He'll be turning those into Lurkers, of course. Uh, the Lurker uh, aspect upgrade is on its way. Do have a little bit of micro over here. Doesn't look like too much has been done. Queen's Nest coming up as well. So it looks like he is going to rush up to Hive really quickly. He's not really relying on the Mutas too much. You know, when you're playing against four Barracks... Uh, they have a lot of units out. And, like, sometimes you'll be able to pick it apart with the mutas, but if you make any misclicks or anything, it can really get out of control. Now, Bishop pushing forward with this group. Look at the mutas. Try to get around them right now because he saw this second group going towards his top right base. One of the mutas gets picked off, but it will be able to go up here. And there you go. Perfect morphs here. You put one on the ramp to block movement, and you put... The one in the back morphing first, so you have enough time for this to finish and run up and burrow before this egg finishes itself. So that's always the way you want to do it. Anyone that makes mistakes like that, they definitely lose games because of it. That gives them just that little bit of extra time to get it burrowed. And of course, with the mutas over the ramp as well, this Bioforce should not be able to break through. All right, so down it burrows. The second one pops out, runs up, burrows as well. Muta's going to hold him back, and it looks like he has secured that top right base, at least for now. You can eventually break a two lurker ramp, that's for sure. Uh, but right at this point in the game, not really. Ooh, Yabsab. Skirting disaster there. Flying so close to these Marines. Looks like he will fly off. The Marines getting onto the map. Let's take a look at the actual tech. A lot of lurkers down here. Very little static D. Carapace just now starting. Hive almost done. So definitely Defiler Mound and Nidus going to have to be on the way. The Muta's finally getting a bit of harassment done. Of course, when you have those lurkers up, there's no sense in flying your mutas around the center of the map anymore. Much better to dive in and get some damage. Looks like he takes a lot of hits, loses a few mutas in the meantime. Slows Bishop down a little bit. Not really that impactful, honestly. Now, look at this. Bishop getting ready here. He wants to break this. Oh, my God. This is absolutely crazy. Look at those spines. Beautifully directed by Yabsat, but not enough. Bishop sacrifices a bunch of Marines and is able to break through. Now, this Lurker is going to pop, and he's going to be able to kill that off easily, which means this top right base is going to fall. Bishop stimming up beautiful moves to break this base. This is such an important moment within the game. If you go for very heavy Marine pressure, like we've seen from Bishop this game with the four barracks before your tech, 
it's the, this type of move makes it all pay off. So he has to be feeling absolutely fantastic about this game right now. It is a two gas Zerg against a two gas Terran. Bishop with a lot of supply, a lot of Marines moving out. No science vessels yet. Which again, this is this just has to do with how late everything gets. Some you know you can rush up to science vessels, get them quickly, but then you're not going to break a base like that. Of course, sometimes you do this type of strategy, you're not able to break that base, and that really hurts as a Terran as well. Now looking over here, double evolution chamber. I think he's probably going to get melee upgrades. Uh, getting consumed right now for his defilers. Another base going up. Four lurkers burrowed, and they are stacked on top of each other. Look at that. It looks like one. We can see that it's four. And if you try that move again as Bishop running up the ramp, you will lose your whole army to that easily. So definitely a smart move by Abseb. He should be able to secure that base. Basically, no matter what, right? Like maybe you can use drop ships, but irradiates aren't going to really break it because you can only irradiate one lurker at a time. So it takes a very long time to break that. He should be able to get his Nidus up, his defilers out before anything like that occurs. So finally, he's going to have his third gas, but that's a little bit late. I mean, this is definitely a Bishop-favored game right now. No question about that. So Bishop does have 2-1 on the way. Yab Sab, in the meantime, he has started that plus one melee. Still has the plus one carapace on the way. It is almost done as well. Such a helpful upgrade. A little group of Marines here just to kind of watch any unit movement out of this main base and, of course, delay any fourth base... Uh, expansions that Yabs have, might be thinking about taking. All right, Defiler popping out. Quite a few lurkers here right now. Consume is done, so getting ready, eating some of that Zergling food. Another macro hatchery on the way. The Nidus has finished up, so he can get units over here very, very easily. And Bishop's macro is looking pretty strong, right? Like, he's just got his third CC done. He's adding a couple barracks. He only went up to five before this third CC, which I think is a smart move when you've gone so marine heavy. You don't really have the tech to break through anything, so you may as well go ahead and expand while your tech kind of builds up. So we see that first uh, irradiate goes down. But, of course, that is only one of four lurkers. So he's going to need some more of those. Uh, before he has a chance. This Overlord might move on top of it. That's a very popular move right now because then you literally can't click on it for Irradiate. As you see, he can't Irradiate this time. <laughs> the Spine's absolutely destroying. And in fact, even Irradiate's the Overlord just to get rid of it. So painful to have to use Irradiate like that. In the meantime, a little Link Counterattack comes up. A little bit annoying, but of course he's got enough Marines to come up and clear that as well. Little Containing Force over here. Drones being sent through as he macros them up to that third base. And finally, the Radiate has killed off that Overlord. We just heard that die. Uh, Scourge now sitting over. I love it, man. It's like there's so many little annoying things Zerg can do to slow you down from being able to do any damage to them. Now, another macro hatchery coming up. And we don't see the Ultralist Cavern yet, but that'll probably come up eventually here. He's going to be able to field a lot of Zerglings. And, of course, as those upgrades get larger, when he gets plus two carapace, Ultralisks will become very, very strong at that point. Now, Bishop landing a fourth CC, really getting his macro flowing. Battlecruiser tech on the way. How many vessels do we have right now? Looks like we have about six with two more coming. Uh, well, make that... <laughs> Make that five with two more coming. Nice plague comes down, hits a couple of those vessels. But I love to see that Bishop's getting into those battle cruisers. He's adding a lot of barracks as well. Got to keep that macro flowing. You've got to field a lot of Marines to be able to fight against those Ultras when they finally do get out. Okay, so we do have an irradiated Lurker there. It looks like he wants to try to push down. He's going to go ahead, throw down the Dark Swarm. And of course, the Marines can't do anything against that. He can still irradiate things, and he will. Radiates the Defiler, irradiates another Lurker. But there's still a couple Lurkers there that haven't been irradiated. So that's not going to be something that you can clean quite yet. But Bishop has this one move he does in situations like this where he's kept really heavy irradiates going and reducing that Lurker count. And that is a Fire Bat Bust. I personally love this move. And it looks like Bishop is going to do it again. Look at this. Six Fire Bats with these amazing 2-1 upgrades going to be sent down. Uh, he does have battle cruisers on the way as well. But as those come down, like if you just keep irradiating lurkers so there's not that many, like, look, one lurker under Darkstorm with these links, six fire bats will absolutely demolish that. 
So as those fire bats make their way down, I'm thinking Bishop might be able to break into this fourth base before it even gets mining. The Defiler down here, throwing down its consumes. Okay, still irradiating the lurkers as much as possible. And here come those fire bats. How many does he have? All right, yeah, just the six. This should be good, though. Ultra's on the way. This is a perfect timing for Bishop if he goes in. Now, look at this. Even up to eight fire bats. Ooh, he is getting ready. Are we going to go in there? Ultra's really crushed fire bats. Okay, there's actually no Dark Swarm over the Lurkers anymore. This could be a great push for him. In the meantime, little scuffle over here. Looks like he's going to come out. Yeah, Dark Swarm to push that back. Bishop, in the meantime, expanding to the top right. Another Dark Swarm comes out. But you know what? He actually has a lot of fire bats. He can very easily clean this up. Fire bats come down. So, yeah, that's going to kill off this Defiler. And honestly, like, this is an area that he can break if he does choose to attack in. But it looks like his multitasking is stretched a little bit thin right now. Ultra's coming forward with the Defilers right now. Trying to throw down some additional Dark Swarms. Of course, stuff going on absolutely all over the place. More battle cruisers on the way. A third starport is up. More lurkers coming down with those Ultras. And suddenly, this is not nearly as breakable. But let's see what he can do. He throws down... Uh, D Matrix, but actually a lot of his Marines under the Dark Swarm. So it looks like the Ultras, as they get under that, will easily push him back. I feel like Bishop missed a little opportunity here to maybe kill this base off. Uh, but as the Battle Cruisers come down, that's something that I don't think we're ready for on the Zerg side. Yapsab definitely still can be in trouble. Some great irradiates coming down. The Battle Cruiser adding its damage in as well. A lot more Fire Bats being fielded onto the map. Bishop, you can see, even at this level, having a hard time with the macro. 2,400 minerals in the bank. He's almost maxed out, though. So that we can forgive him for the th uh, fifth base, even, going up here. Plague coming down. Uh, and look at that. Even ship attacks for the battle cruisers. Love what I'm seeing here from Bishop. Four bases for Absab, though, right? We can't count him out. It, it definitely feels like Bishop has been in control. Uh, for most of the game here, like especially after you kill that that third base in the top right of the map, and he's kept containments on. But you know, when Zerg gets on four gas, they're pretty deadly. They start to get pretty darn cost efficient between Plague, Dark Storm, and Ultralisks with high carapace. Of course, he doesn't have full carapace yet, and we're almost a plus three attack for those Marines. So that's going to make it a little bit harder for him to make these Ultralisks work out, since those were a bit slower. Those carapace upgrades this game. Okay, Radiate's coming forward, chasing down a lot of these Ultras. SCV's on the ramp to screw with them and their AI. The Ling's trying to come up, but yeah, he's not going to be able to break this with a single Ultra. That's not going to end up happening. Firebats, of course, shredding through those Zerglings. Let's take a look over here. Looks like the Battle Cruisers... Oh, yeah, this is a beautiful thing about Polypoid. You can put Battle Cruisers right on the edge and shoot gases. That works at every single base, so that is a very, very strong move. Uh, in Terran versus Zerg. All right, still Bishop flying around. He has so many mining bases. He has so much income at the moment. It's really about continuing to create all of his units and send them out on the map. It seems very tough for uh, Yabsab to do much here. He's down about 80 supply. Yeah, see, like, he's he is popping out the Ultras, but I feel like he's also being just slightly wasteful with them. I think he really needs to wait until he's got that 5 Carapace, considering we have plus 3 attack on the Marines. You really need equal upgrades with the Ultras, and the same can be said with the Marines. If anyone is one uh, attack or Carapace ahead of the other, then it becomes pretty one-sided pretty quickly with Ultra versus Marine. All right, the Battle Cruiser's coming forward. They can withstand a Plague. He did get Plagued. Of course, the plagued one getting hit here. A little bit unfortunate. Another plague going down, but he's going to be able to pick off this uh, spore very, very quickly. Battle Cruiser is really going to work right now. A bunch of Scourge being made, and here come some Marines as well, helping to target down that spore colony, and also they're targeting down the Nidus. Some great moves here from Bishop. Very hard for Yabsep to hold on. In the meantime, he does have a counterattacking force over here. Bishop's still wandering the map, patrolling around a bit, being very, very active. Oh, and he right-clicks onto this colony, which means the Scourge get their free hits. 
Beautifully done. Clears those BCs. Somehow keeps his fourth base alive. Unfortunately, losing his fifth down at six. It's like a little plague going down. Small army coming over to this side. Okay, he will finally be able to break this, I think. Of course, you don't want to be too wasteful here, but with the Deviler, you should be able to break top right. Can he hold on down here at the same time, though? No vessels in sight. A couple more battle cruisers coming down to help out. All right, going to get those battle cruisers on top of the spore. Out comes a Defiler and throws out a really, really nice plague. So these Marines getting very, very badly hurt. The BCs targeting down spores as much as possible. In the meantime, looks like Yabsab is going to break top right if he sends his ultras forward. The Ling's getting killed off by some of the fire bats, but it looks like everything cleared. So top right, definitely not going to be something that Bishop can save right now. But it doesn't really matter. He denied this base down here. Looks like he's going to deny it again. And the battle cruisers have really done some work in the bottom left. He's been unable to break it with the bio. But the BCs doing their job to a T. Really, really awesome to clear that out. Of course, he lifts his command center here. So maybe he can retake it later. But it seems like Bishop's never-ending march of units should be able to win this. Look, we're running out of gas. This one's depleted, so he's only mining two at a time. This one's just about to be, so that'll be just two at a time. This one, plenty of gas left, but that's not enough gas to fight against a Terran of this magnitude. Still up about 80 supply here, Bishop is. Well, not for long if you walk over those lurkers without detecting. Does scan and takes them out, and I think this is just about it for Yabsev. Like, he's making a few more moves around the map. But, yeah, it feels like this is very, very close to over. A couple, uh, <laughs> a couple Ultras coming down. Of course, the BCs add a ton of damage to that as well. And I, I feel like we're going to see GG here just momentarily as... I mean, yeah, Yabsab, I guess he's got this mineral base. He's trying to take this one. It's about to finish. But really, the amount of battle cruisers flying down is pretty amazing right like he, he's making three at a time and just sending them in and just ravaging everything it's so cost inefficient to kill bcs with scourge you know he even got that carapace upgrade but of course the plus one attack not really gonna matter a few marines coming up to that additional base and honestly if he kills this that's the final blow there's really nothing left at that point Ooh, the triple eraser, but countered by the burrow play. Still some nice tactics going on. But Yabsab is below 70 supply, which is kind of the magic number for holding on to your bases. And that's it. GG. Bishop wins game one.